Okay, so what uh, I've explained in this uh, YouTube video, okay, for almost one hour. Okay, so I basically covered on the basic structure, okay, of what you need to have in your chapter number three. Okay, so this is a very important chapter. Uh, yeah, I mean, in fact, every chapter is important, okay, from chapter one, two, three, until chapter five. Okay, but chapter three is basically is uh, designed, I mean, the way chapter three should be structured is it must be able to answer your research questions. So what you plan to, what, what, you, what are your, I mean, what you write as your research questions and your research objectives. Okay, what you plan to actually answer uh, those three questions that you listed, okay, in chapter number one. Okay, so the technique or the the design of your questionnaire, okay, the population, the sample size, I mean the 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 sample uh, from the population that you will take, okay, and then uh, how you plan actually to evaluate the or you plan to analyze the information that you collect from the questionnaire. Okay, all must be explained clearly in your chapter number three okay and i also mentioned clearly in the video uh, especially for the population okay because when you propose uh, or whatever topic that you uh, propose whether is uh, i've gone through uh, the i mean uh, some of the thesis from group a okay but yet uh, i think today i will try to finish on group b okay your group but I think many of the groups uh, from group A, I think it should uh, maybe similar to group B as well. Okay, in terms of the formatting of your uh, citation. Okay, I, I'm not sure whether you you are you still understand how you need to properly cite. Okay, the the format when you want to cite article in your how you want to cite the reference in your thesis. Okay, so make sure that the that you follow. Uh, watch the video of uh, the discussion on chapter number two. And then I noticed that many of, uh, but I'm referring to group A, okay, I'm yet to check from group B. Okay, whenever you submit assignment, at least provide last, uh, apa, the cover page, okay, your group names, the title, and uh, okay, so some groups don't even bother to provide the cover page, meaning the group names, the title, the metric number. So in future submission, okay, uh, which you need to submit, uh, I think by end of uh, next week, okay, uh, before you go for the mid semester break, will be the draft for chapter number two. So I will put out the instructions in your OL, okay, sometime today, okay. So that will be the the task that you need to uh, fulfill, okay, before you go for the semester break. So. Um, Okay, so what I've discussed uh, in in the video, okay, in this video here, is basically focusing on the uh, basic structure, okay, of chapter number three. Okay, of course, when you go through some of the examples of thesis, okay, you may find that uh, some of the thesis have different uh, structure or the way they present the chapter three, okay, depending on maybe the advice from the supervisor or the uh, so that I mean, but I think the one that I shown you, and uh, especially the one that relate to, uh, you can use thesis number fifty seven, uh, twenty eight, okay, as your uh, main guideline how to actually design your chapter number three, okay. So that chapter number three will consist of, uh, especially three point two, which is the research design. Okay, the design of the of your thesis, I mean, of chapter number three. So how you actually plan to uh, investigate your issue, okay, can be divided into these sub uh, topics, the type of study that you do, the source of data, unit of analysis, and I think I've stopped until population frame, okay, whereby you can use the Krechi and Morgan table. You can find the table in your OL. Okay, the link to the table basically is just a copy and paste. I just uh, Google from the, I'm just, you just type the Krechi and Morgan table, okay, from the internet and you should be able to find the, uh, the, apa tu, 
example of the uh, Kerechi and Morgan table from the website, okay, from any, so it's one of the, uh, one of the most common uh, table, okay, that you can refer to, okay, to, uh, to determine what is the minimum sample size, depending on the size of your population. So again, so this material, this uh, simple table is provided in your OL. So you, you need to refer to this table as well, okay, uh, as part of your uh, justification why you select that sample size. Okay, and upon checking some of the thesis, I mean the, the proposed title. Okay, so if you're, let's say if you're proposing to do uh, for, uh, I mean, for the whole of UUM students. So you need to know how, how many, what is the actual number of UUM students. So you need to check with the, with the relevant department, whether HEA or you need to contact with the school, our office and ask the administration what is the actual number of UUM students to determine what is the total population. Okay, so that when you want to justify how many samples that you need to take okay but you need to specify clearly in your chapter number three what is the exact number of population which i actually have already shown you the example from i think from this uh this is 28 or 57 okay whereby the student uh clearly mentioned the uh what is the population from i think this is number 57 if i'm not mistaken Okay, so you can refer back to the uh, to the example. Okay, so for example, this one. Okay, the number of active students. So these are, I think, uh, already mentioned in the uh, in my video. So you can refer to that video and okay. So this is number twenty. So this thesis was done in uh, UEM. Okay, this is number twenty. Yeah, this one. Okay, so for example, this particular student, uh, she did, okay, the study on uh, SBM students, School of uh, Business, uh, SBM student UEM from one, one of the schools from COB. Okay, so the population is based on the number, the total number of SBM students. So if the focus of your thesis uh, only focusing on SAFB students, so you need to know what is the actual number of SAB students uh, based on the latest semester, lah, which is the current semester, A201. So for example, when this study was done, the total number of uh, SBM students was 2529. So based on 2529, okay, you refer to the uh, Krechi and Morgan uh, table. So I already discussed this, this part in the video. So if you have watched the video, you have no problem to understand how to use the Krechi and Morgan table to determine what is the number of sample size. Meaning that this will be the minimum number of respondents or that should answer your questionnaire. Okay, and when you analyze the data in your project, it should consist, so assuming that the population of SAB student is 2529, okay, but of course you cannot simply make up this number. Okay, if you, if you, you must get this, this actual number from the from the school, okay, and inquire what is the total number of students, lah, okay. So that is part of the research process, determining what is the population size, okay, the population uh, frame. And then uh, 335 will be the required, the minimum number of respondents, not the, you need, I mean, you can have more than 335 if the population is 32529, okay, but this will be the minimum. So, Meaning that you need to have 335 at least, okay, 335 questionnaires to be answered and analyzed in your chapter number four, okay, as part of the analysis. So this is based on the thesis number 20, okay. So what I discussed in the previous video was basically covering from uh, the discussion of what is uh, the unit of analysis, the source of data, okay. I think it's quite straightforward to understand. So population is the whole, uh, the focus of your study. If the study focus on the whole of UUM, so the population frame will be the entire uh, students from UUM include, but if you're only focusing on undergraduate, so it will only consist of undergraduate of UUM students. If, the, if your population is, let's say, 
Okay. So one of the student from group A, okay, they want to do a study at, I think at Petaling Jaya or something like that. Okay. So the, the, that particular group must uh, must get the information what is the the the, the, the total number of uh, population, okay, uh, that is relevant to their project lah from the Petaling Jaya area. I think they are doing something on small medium enterprise SME. So they need to get that information of what is the the actual number of uh, SMEs in Petaling Jaya. So uh, you cannot simply you know. Uh, cook up or klentong lah or simply create a, num a number so that uh, when you want to refer to the Krechi and Morgan table okay you get a misleading so that is the only actual part that you need to do okay because the questionnaire you can answer on your own I mean you can distribute among your friends okay but the, the population frame how many the exact number of uh, the population of your study Okay, depending on the scope of your the topic of your research lah, if you focus on SAV, then maybe some groups can can uh, get the information. Okay, but if you're focusing on the whole of UUM, then you need to get that information as well. But if you're doing on other than UUM, uh, let's say from other uh, part of Kedah, for example, so you need to get that particular information. You cannot simply, okay, uh, because that is uh, the requirement for you to determine what will be the minimum sample size that you need to obtain okay from uh, the i mean from the Krechi and Morgan table so continuing from from where i stop okay in the video so i think i stop until the uh, until the sampling technique okay so the one that uh, i think very popular among students or even among researchers is to use convenient sampling Okay, which what I discussed the last part of the video. Okay, so convenient sampling is basically uh, okay using a sample technique which is what is convenient to you. Meaning you have no you have no uh, specific group or person that you want to target. So whomever that can uh, answer your questionnaire as long as they belong to the population. So let's say you are targeting SAB student. So anyone from SAB, regardless of whether they are female, male, okay, whether they are doing uh, course from economy, okay, finance or banking, as long as they belong to the SAB group, I mean, under the uh, as long as they are SAB students, so anyone from from the SAB students can answer, okay. So that is what convenient sampling is about, lah. Okay, but of course. Uh, if you want to do a more, I mean, uh, if you want to have a more uh, representative, okay, meaning that you want, uh, you you must, for example, like from from this particular uh, from this particular thesis, okay, from SBM. So they have four different departments, similar to us. We have uh, department of economics, agribusiness, finance, and banking. So let's say we have like four four departments under SAB so you can get the what is the actual number of students from each of the department and let's say and then you can take the ratio so, so for example 499 students out of 2529 what is the ratio what is the percentage so and then you multiply by the 335 students meaning uh, from these 335 respondents what is the the Meaning you take the, I mean, based on the percentage, the more, I mean, 499 out of 2529. So let's say that that will come out to, um, how many? Um, okay, 499 divided by 2529. So it will be around 19 or 20%. So 20% from 335 students will be around, uh, you know, will be around. Uh, multiply by 335 so meaning that you are expected to have around 60 plus students from uh, let's say from marketing I mean if you this will be a much better representation meaning your sample will represent okay the, the proportion of the uh, of your uh, of the department from each of the I mean from each department from the school eh? okay but this is what we call as uh, cluster sampling. Okay, sampling meaning that you cluster them into 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 the course. 
okay, based on the department or based on the course. And then you take, uh, you ask the student from each of the uh, department or from each course, okay, to answer as so that you will get the number of respondent according to the percentages or ratio lah, of the students from the whole school. So you can do that as well because, for example, you, you, you do not want all of your respondents to come from economic department. Okay, you want some of the students to come from finance, to come from banking, okay, if you are doing on SCLV students. Okay, so because when you analyze the findings, at least you can have more discussion based on the uh, the the cost or the department. Okay, whether because you do not want all the 335 to, uh, respondent will come all from human resource management, for example. Okay, I'm referring to this particular thesis. So the same goes with your own project, lah. Okay, if you are doing something on the UEM, then it's better to have uh, the detailed breakdown. Okay, from each of the four departments that you, that we have in SAB, and get the exact number of student that belong from each department: economic, agribusiness, finance, banking, and the and the respondents. Okay, should be should represent or at least you do. I mean, you must have students from each of the course, lah, okay, or each of the department. So this is, uh, but I think for, for, for I mean, uh, so th there are many types of sampling technique, okay, you can use. So one, uh, I mean, the, the easiest one will be convenient sampling, okay. So you identify the number of respondent, okay, and from this 335, okay, any respondent, as long as they belong to the SBM, whether they are from marketing, entrepreneurship, business, or human resource, doesn't really matter. Okay, but the, the best or the, the, the more appropriate uh, manner is to, to get representative from each of the department, okay, or the course, okay, according to the percentages, lah, the ratio of the number of students from each of the department. So that will be much better in terms of having uh, a more... Uh, uh, balance analysis okay when you are uh, finished with the data collection and you want to analyze your findings so that will be the, the the best way to approach okay your sample but for example if you are doing on the b40 group okay uh, income uh, the cost of living among b40 groups let's say in kedah so kedah meaning that you uh, meaning that they can come from any part in kedah whether they are from jitra they are from alusta sungai petani uh, gurun okay or any part of kedah doesn't matter as long as they are they they belong or they work or they live in kedah okay and they fall under the b40 category okay whether they live in jitra or whatever part in kedah doesn't matter so as long as they live in kedah and they belong to the b40 groups so these people can answer your questionnaire. Okay, if you are if you were to do it in the real world, lah. okay. But if you are doing on a B40 group, so the only part that you need to 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 be, uh, I mean, you need to get the actual information is how many B40, uh, how many B40 uh, people, okay, or workers, uh, are in Kedah. So to get the information, you you may need to refer to the. Uh, to the relevant authority lah. Okay, you need to check with the Department of Statistics or the from the study that you are referring to, okay, find from the uh, Department of Statistics the latest number of B40 according to states. Okay, they, they do release this uh, statistics, okay, on annual basis. So you can, but you must show that how you get this number, I mean, how you actually obtain this information in your uh, chapter number three. Okay, for, for example, uh, this student mentioned that, okay, the number of uh, SBM student is 2529. So this, okay, I can always cross-check, lah, if you're doing on uh, on on SAB, okay, I can always cross-check whether this information is it correct or not. If you are doing, if you take the information from Department of Statistics Malaysia, so you need to mention where, what is the source of the information, what report do you get that information from. Okay, so this must be very, you must be specified clearly in your chapter number three. Okay, the source of the information where you obtain the information on what is the actual number of population 
uh, from uh, in your study lah. okay so i hope that that part is clear so you cannot simply create the number on your own okay so that is one thing that uh, so that is the only part lah in your research that you need to get the actual information okay but the respondent does not need to be among b40 the actual b40 if you are doing on b40 uh, group lah they can come from anyone among your friends okay but how many B40 in Kedah? So that must be the actual uh, number, okay? The real uh, real world number lah, not, not number that you create on your own. Okay, so that is one part that I I think we, uh, I stopped from the uh, last video. Okay, so to continue on that, okay? Uh, if you look at the, uh, some of the thesis, okay? Especially on uh, thesis number 20, uh, 57 or 28 okay which the thesis that i want to uh, you guys to actually refer to lah most of the time okay so from thesis 28 or 57 okay because if you look at thesis number 20 okay they uh, the student even include operational definition and measurement okay so i do not need this lah in your thesis okay what i want you to follow okay uh, thesis number 28 or thesis number uh, 57 okay because uh, some 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 thesis or some supervisors some lecturers do require the student to provide uh, the operational definition okay but i think that is a bit too uh, too much to put in your undergraduate uh, project okay so once you have uh, discussed okay what is the population size okay how you get that information from okay and how are you going to determine the minimum number of sample using the Krechi and Morgan table okay and how you plan to actually so basically sampling technique I think most of you or maybe all of the groups group A and group B will be using the convenient sampling approach meaning you only distribute the question to anyone who belong to the group lah. so I think there is no issue on the sampling technique okay so next will be on the uh, the, the important part which is the questionnaire design okay so uh, in thesis number 28 okay so once you have the, uh, described clearly what is the uh, what is the population and sampling design okay let me go to this uh, okay Okay, so in thesis 57, okay, they have this measurement uh, section, meaning that, okay, based on, uh, so this is based on how you plan actually to design your questionnaire, similar to uh, thesis number 28, okay, thesis number 28, they go straight to the, uh, okay, the questionnaire design. So I think you can use uh, 3.3 from uh, thesis number 28, meaning that after you mention what is the minimum, what is your sample size based on the Krechi and Morgan table according to the total number of population, okay, uh, in your study, and then you determine what is the sample size required and how you are going to uh, conduct the or obtain the information from. For example, this thesis also uses convenient sampling okay this is number 28 so once you have discussed on this population and sampling design you can go straight to questionnaire design okay questionnaire design is what is the how do you plan to uh, i mean what is the basic structure of your questionnaire so i think this is a much easier format to follow rather than if you use uh, other tc sometimes they have this operational definition which I don't think uh, you you need to have lah. I think this, maybe at master's level, yes, you need to have this discussion more detail. Okay, so but I think at your level, okay, given the limited time frame, okay, in the if you are doing uh, an actual research, okay, you need to have the, what we call pilot test. Okay, pilot test mean that before you you do the actual survey, you need to do what we call pilot testing. Pilot testing is you send out the questionnaire to the respondent, maybe a small group of respondent and see the consistency in the answer that you get uh, from this small group of respondent. 
and then uh, what and then you uh, do the simple analysis and then so maybe this is required in your semester seven when you want to do your kertas ilmiah your your research project okay so part of before you actually do your uh, analysis you need to do this pilot testing okay meaning you you send out the questionnaire to maybe a small group of students or respondent and let them answer your questionnaire and you want to see whether your questionnaire does it pass the uh, i mean we have what, what we call this chromba alpha measurement okay but i'm not going to discuss this too much lah, okay because I, I, uh, for this particular project this semester okay maybe you you just take note what is pilot testing okay but you don't need to do this uh, test lah, for this particular project Okay, so but in the real world, if you are doing a research, before you do uh, your actual data collection, you need to do a pilot testing and report the pilot testing result in your project, uh, in your thesis as well. Just what you see in uh, thesis number 20. Lah. Okay, this is just to show that your questionnaire pass or is, is uh, it fulfill the minimum requirement. Okay, or it, uh, you know, the, uh, it, it, it has all the right components, it pass the, the minimum uh, marks, okay, meaning that your questionnaire is re re reliable, uh, is suitable for you to use in your uh, study. So you need to do pilot testing, okay, before you conduct the actual data collection. So this will be required in your uh, actual data, I mean, collection when you do your uh, research project. Okay, uh, maybe in semester, I mean, most probably in semester seven. Lah. Okay, so this is one part. Okay, but uh, for this particular semester, okay, you, do, you don't need to do the pilot testing, meaning that the questionnaire that you have uh, designed or you obtain from any thesis or journal, you can just distribute them directly to the respondent. Okay, which is not actually the, the correct way because the correct way is to do pilot testing. Okay, so what so wait, so what is uh, questionnaire? Uh, sorry, sorry. Okay, so what is questionnaire design? Okay, questionnaire design is how you uh, break or how you design your questionnaire. I'm sure by now every group should have a sample of okay at least one set of questionnaire that you will be uh, referring to. Okay, and then, um, so when you are submitting your draft for chapter number three, so I need, so you need to submit together with the questionnaire as well. Okay, before you conduct your uh, actual data, uh, I mean, before you do your uh, data collection, meaning you ask your friends to actually to uh, submit. Maybe I would like to see your questionnaire before, uh, by end of this uh, next week as well, meaning that, uh, before you go for the mid semester break, so I want to see the template, okay, the draft of your questionnaire first, because uh, once I uh, actually go through your questionnaire and I see that, because I need to see the components and see whether the questionnaire that you want to use needs some modification or not, and whether it can actually answer the research questions that you uh, plan to do, okay, in your chapter number one. So, yeah, so I think, uh, so that, so just uh, whatever questionnaire that you uh, are planning to use from past thesis, past journals, okay, include them as well uh, as part of your submission by end of uh, next week. Okay, because I, I don't think any, any group, uh, you are going to construct the questionnaire from zero, meaning from scratch. I think most of, because I, I, I've been reminding every group from the early semester, find a topic that you have sample questionnaire. So I believe, okay, any, every group should have access to at least one set of questionnaire which is relevant to your particular project, but you need to do some modification to suit your topic lah, uh, or, the, or the scope of your study. If you're doing on UUM and the questionnaire is not on UUM, so you need to change lah, some of the wordings to reflect or to match the focus of your study. Lah. Okay, so that is one, one part, okay? And then, so what is questionnaire design? So most of the time when you are constructing a questionnaire, you should have several sections. And the first one will be the 
demographic section lah. Meaning you ask questions about uh, the apa, the age, okay, whether the gender, background, okay, all sorts of basic information about the respondent. Okay, so if you're asking student, uh, I mean, if your respondent are from, uh, I mean, consists of students, so maybe you want to know information whether what, whether which department do they belong to. So let's say you are focusing on SAHB students. So you need, have, you need to have a section or one of the question from the demographic uh, from section A should consist of uh, options, okay, uh, tick which section which is relevant, uh, meaning whether you are from economic, agri, um, finance or banking. Okay, so uh, so this information must be modified uh, or added into your questionnaire to reflect the population of your study. Okay, so do not simply take directly the questionnaire that you get from the internet. Okay, but you need to do some changes lah. Okay, so that it's aligned with the with the scope of your study. So that information you can uh, you can I think is quite simple to understand when you go through. Uh, so I think this thesis. I'm not sure whether this thesis got questionnaire at the end of the. Uh, so this thesis, no, I think, but this one. Uh, this one also, no. This one, yeah, this one, yes, yes. Okay, so this one, I think, is on this anti, uh, entrepreneurial intention, okay? So you've got information like the age group. So, uh, so if you, if you already... Uh, key in certain range, meaning, for example, if your group of respondent belong to, I mean, uh, among students, so you don't have to have, I mean, usually undergraduates will be around this age and maybe this age, okay, diploma or metric students. So you need to have uh, options that make sense, lah, okay, do not put uh, age gap like 50 years old, but your respondent belong to undergraduate students, so it doesn't really, uh, I mean, of course, maybe you do find some uh, senior student, okay, doing a uh, degree, but I think most of the time, especially because the respondents are among your friends, so maybe it, it, it doesn't need to be that you need to tick the box, maybe you can just key in the information, meaning that uh, you just put a blank space, uh, and then the, the respondent just write down the age number. Okay, so this is one, there are several ways lah, that you can do. Uh, but gender, male and female, yes, you can have this kind of question. Okay, but for each, okay, it is not, uh, I mean, sometimes you can just use, like, state what is your age. Like, for example, 21, then you just type or key in 21 in the questionnaire. Okay, if your age is, is let's say, 22, then just write down 22. And then when you key in in your SPSS, just basically key in the exact number of age lah, according to what the respondent actually uh, key in, okay, in the questionnaire. Okay, so again, this depends on on the on the on the type of if you are if you are focusing, let's say, on the B forty groups. So B forty, maybe you have people from uh, from from early twenties or even until uh, seventy years old, depending on on the scope of your study. So maybe you, in, in that kind of study, maybe you want to have this kind of uh, options, meaning you put the age uh, into brackets. But, some, but, but I think most of the time, you can just let the participant, I mean, let the respondent key in the actual age in the, in the, in the questionnaire, okay? So because not all questions are suitable for you to give options. Okay, sometimes it is much better to just let the participant uh, or the respondent, sorry, okay, uh, key in the actual age lah in the form. Okay, so gender, race, okay, uh, education level, okay, and then because this particular student is focusing on, I think, SBM student. So, yeah, so this is, if you are doing on SEFB, so it will be the Bachelor of Economics, Agri, Finance, I mean, Finance and Banking, something like that lah. Okay. So you may have maybe one or two more questions depending on uh, whether you need that information or not. Okay, but if you are not 
uh, I mean, let's say maybe you want to ask what is the pointer, for example, the CGPA, the current CGPA. Okay, if, if that information is relevant to your objective, whether why CGPA is relevant to your study, so maybe you can have one section on what is your current pointer or CGPA. Okay, from the from the last semester. Okay, but if that information is not relevant to your study, uh, if you why you need to know whether your respondent is uh, first class honor student, second upper or second lower, if that information is not relevant. Okay, maybe or maybe you want to use that information to if you are looking at entrepreneurial. So maybe you want to see whether students who, uh, who are who have very good CGPA, maybe they tend to get involved into uh, entrepreneurial activity more than low uh, students with low CGPA, maybe. So maybe you want to do that kind of uh, correlation or analysis. You want to see whether CGPA actually affect the student's uh, intention to engage in business activity. So maybe you need to, you can also add some other questions, but do not have too many questions. Lah. So whatever question that you plan to uh, that you plan to add or plan to ask should be relevant to the objective and the research questions. Okay, so there's no harm in adding more questions. Okay, because uh, sometimes you 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 may not realize that when you start doing the analysis, uh, some some questions may give you more answers. I mean more insight or more. Uh, clarification into the issue that you want to uh, study. So by adding a few more questions on the on the demographic section, okay, may prove to be useful uh, to actually uh, provide you with more answers lah, in your uh, project. Okay, so it makes the study more interesting, okay, more information for you to actually analyze. Okay, so uh, the first part is usually focusing on uh, the demographic section, okay, uh, whenever you construct your uh, questionnaire. Okay, so section A will be on demographic, okay. And then again, this depends on the scope of your study, okay. There is no one exact template, lah, but the, the most common one will be the age, gender, race, okay, education level, depending on if you're doing focusing on on B40, for example, so maybe you need information on what is the income level, okay, whether you are working at government, private, or working, uh, I mean, you are self-employed, okay, you are government servant, or you are working in a private uh, private sector. So those information may need to be added, okay, but I think if you have some sample questionnaires, okay, usually those questions are already there, so you don't need to, to add more questions, okay, depending on where you get the uh, that question that questionnaire from. Okay, so section A will be on demographic, and then you move on to section B. So usually section B will 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 actually focus on uh, the, the what you plan to actually ask uh, or the objective of your study. Okay, so uh, for this particular topic on entrepreneurial intention. So I think most students or most study lah, okay, will use what we call as Likert scale, L-I-K-E-R-T, okay. Likert, uh, Likert scale means that scale, that, I mean answers that you put into uh, range, I mean uh, score one to five. Okay, usually one will be the highest score, uh, one, I mean, uh, one will be the lowest score. Lah. So I think this is one of the common uh, skills. Strongly disagree, strongly agree. Okay, so you can see different, uh, different style of, um, okay, different style of uh, Likert scale. But I think the common one will be something like this. Lah. Okay, so how you plan to divide your section B and until whatever sections that you want. Okay, using the Likert scale approach. Okay, so it depends on the scope of your study. So, for example, this on the entrepreneur intention. So the student divide according to the to the to the theory lah, meaning the risk taking, uh, education factor. So meaning they divide the section based on the factor factor that they, that will influence the entrepreneurial intention. Okay, so that will apply to your thesis as well. 
So if you are focusing on something on the, the spending pattern, okay, during COVID-19, so whatever uh, sections, okay, or factor that you think will influence again, okay, uh, do not simply create a certain section on your own because it you need every section need to have all these uh, sub questions, okay, from each component, and usually these questions are based on past studies, based on uh, previous articles, pre previous journals. So you don't simply create the, this question on your own. Usually these uh, master student or PhD students or even uh, academicians like me, lecturers, whatever questions that we want to put, usually uh, we, we try to refer to uh, past studies first. And then if you want to add one or two questions, for example, you are talking about COVID-19. Okay, so past study does not even have COVID yet. So you want to add questions that relate to COVID-19 Okay, you can add maybe one or two questions from each of the group, but the main questions should be there first. Okay, and then you may you may want to add one or two more questions to reflect the impact of COVID-19. Okay, then you can add some of these questions in the questionnaire. Okay, so that one is no for me no no problem. So that's why I want to see your draft questionnaire. Okay, especially if you have any. If your topic is related or you want to relate to COVID-19, which is what I want to see, lah, because it makes the study more relevant okay, with the current situation. So you may have one or two questions from each section related to COVID-19. Okay? But I mean, you don't have to have every question, every section on COVID-19, depending whether that question is relevant or not. But you should have, but you need to update the questions okay, that reflect our current situation now lah, okay on COVID-19 whether it got to do with the uh, with the household debt I mean, intention to purchase uh, buying halal food using grab service or whatever lah, okay whatever topics that you propose okay so any topic that you that you uh, end up doing okay or submitted already to me uh, last week okay on your chapter one so that you I mean must be related to uh, the the questions that you need to add Based, uh, on top of whatever that you are currently using from past thesis, okay, you can have one more uh, or two questions, okay, from each of the depending on which section that you think is relevant. So this question you must design on your own, okay. You must, but you must follow the similar style of sentence, lah. For example, this one, I, I start with all with I, I there, I am, I am. So. If you want to add questions on this, so you, you need to start the sentence with the word I as well. Eh? Okay, so if you're talking about entrepreneurship education, so you can see that some of the questions, for example, it start with something similar here. And then uh, you can have, but if there is no standard or similar style of writing, then you can have your own style. Eh? Okay, uh, for example, like this one, I will, I will, I will, I will. So if you want to add one or more two questions, you can have the word I will uh, to start. So at least it is consistent with the style of uh, question being asked uh, on each of this particular factor. Okay, so this is something that you need to pay attention when you are uh, designing your questionnaire. Okay, so especially if you are adding new questions or modifying questions that will uh, suit the topic of your study. So make sure that the the structure of the questions to be as consistent as possible with uh, the wording, okay, the choice of word, okay, and the uh, and the sentence must be easy to understand. So that's why we have pilot study. Pilot study means that uh, we want to see that each of the question, okay, when we calculate the Cromba alpha, as I mentioned just now, okay, the that is uh, one of the indicator that that we can say that the question structure, the way we word uh, the wording of our question is easy to understand and is able to fulfill our, our objective. Because sometimes you, the, the sentence is supposed to, uh, you, you have this intention. I mean, if you write a sentence, okay, uh, the goal of that sentence is supposed to measure one thing. But when the respondent read the question, they get confused. Confused meaning that maybe when they read the question, they think of another thing. 
So what is not what you actually want them to answer. So the consistency uh, in answering the question, let's say one respondent uh, tick this question as five, then another respondent tick as number one. So another respondent tick as number three. So you get a bunch of different answers uh, from the respondent. So when you have this inconsistency in the in the answers, so that is one of the indicator that this question is not uh, is not a good question. Maybe the, you need to change the wording of the question because you get different uh, variety of answers, okay, from the respondent. And then, uh, so this is one of the things lah, what we look for when you are doing pilot testing. Okay, you want to check the answers. Uh, provided by the respondent, do they belong to the same group? Meaning that if most respondents tick five and four, uh, then you can say that this question is is quite consistent, lah. Okay, but if some question, some uh, participant or some respondent choose one, suddenly uh, some group of students choose five. So, and sometimes we cannot even see why some student choose one, some student choose five. Uh, so these are the the things that we look for, lah. Okay, when you are doing uh, questionnaire, okay. So I think uh, so that that is uh, the important part that I want to highlight when it comes to uh, questionnaire design. Okay, of course this is uh, got to do with the practice. Okay, when you look at questionnaire, okay, always go back to your research question. Okay, what questions that you uh, that you okay, have in your uh, questionnaire? Okay, and then you must reflect to the, and then of course, okay, when you read journals, when you read thesis, okay, you must see how the, the student or the author of that uh, journal use the information to answer the research question. Okay, which question are used to uh, answer which research question? So, for example, you have three research questions, okay, and then when you go through the, the, the journals, when you go through the thesis, Okay, that you are referring to, you need to see which questions are used to uh, answer which uh, quest. I mean, your research question or your research objective. Okay, so that so at least you know which part, which part of the questionnaire for which particular question in your research questions. Okay, uh, so that is again another factor that you want to uh, look at lah, when you are designing your questionnaire. Okay. So, uh, so what else to mention? Okay, and then measurement of variables. Okay, I think in your basic statistics, you already learned this. Uh, your data can be divided into norm, uh, ratio, interval, uh, data, nominal scale or ordinal scale. Okay, nominal or ordinal data that that you cannot put values. For example, male or female. Okay, gender. Uh, uh, I mean, for example, uh, it, what is your cost with the economic student, agribusiness. So these are using uh, nominal or ordinal scale. Okay, but when you ask information, for example, what is your CGPA? Okay, CGPA means you can measure whether CGPA is 3.6, 3.2. So those are di different type of data. So when you look at this um, questionnaire, Usually the the background of I mean the demographic section will consist many of nominal and ordinal scale, okay. But for section B, uh, when you start using the Likert scale, okay. So Likert scale usually uh, you want to use the score. For example, student tick number five, number four, number three, okay. Strongly agree, agree. So each of the uh, answer that the student provide in the questionnaire. You can use that marks as the marker, lah, as the marks that, that will see whether the mark is whether is high or not. Okay, so let me go through this. Uh... Okay, so this is uh, the yeah. So you you need to have something like this as well. Okay, so for example, when you when you uh, design the questions, okay, usually, okay, where you get these questions from. So, for example, if you're referring to past studies, okay, so this just to justify that the questions that you put, okay, actually are based on previous studies. So, meaning that you don't simply 
uh, get the questions or create the questions on your own. But of course, lah, when I mention that, you can add some new questions. Okay. So not all questions, you need to have the reference where you get the question from. But at least most of the questions that you design must have some reference where you get the questions from. Lah. Okay, for example, this one, intention to purchase, attitude. So topic like this, I think is quite simple to get where the information uh, taken from. Lah. Okay. Uh, let me see. So we don't have this Chrome bar uh, alpha. We don't have this pilot testing. Okay, yeah, man. this is already in chapter 4. Okay, any questions? You all dengar ke, duduk tidur ke apa? Okay, okay, so that's all for the lecture for today. Okay, no questions lah as usual. Semua senyap, semua faham lah. Okay, by the way, have you installed the SPSS program? Answer. Sir, so, but I got some problem. Uh, can I share screen with the computer? Ah yes. Stata tak boleh. You cannot use Stata to key in uh, questionnaire. Uh, I mean, your the information from questionnaire you must use uh, software like SPSS. Sir, I stuck in here, sir. Which one should I choose? Because I stay from the panduan. Is it the authorized user license or concurrent user license? Mm. Ni apa? I don't know whether I, I, I saw... Okay, how about others? Do, do you get this, this screen on your installation as well? You are dapat yang sama juga ke? Screen sama? Saya pun tak ingat dah mana saya install apa yang keluar. Cuba play yang A dulu. I mean, yang the, uh, the first one. Huh? But later, maybe you will get the authorization authorization code. The, the license file tu dah ada dah kat dalam tu. Cuba pergi uh, next dulu. Next dulu ya. Go back. Pergi back dulu, keluar dulu, keluar dulu. I mean, eh... Uh, Back again. Back, back. Hmm. 
Ah, back lagi, back lagi. I don't know why why you start with this licensing punya. Dah, dah install ke belum? Your, your SPSS. It shouldn't be. Yeah, like, finish. Maybe tak, tak ikut step yang saya bagi tu. I think ada yang. Because I, I, when I ask some other student from other groups, from group A and also I think some from group B, they manage to follow the step by step with no problem. Because I, I use the same file or the same uh, folder as well. And many of my uh, I mean students, lah, this semester, last semester, also using the same. Cuba remove dulu program tu. And then uh, because you, sh you, you shouldn't be prompted with that screen with the license. Alright, sir. Cuba tanya.